Okay, so you say hello YouTube today. What do I need to say? Just say hello YouTube. Hello YouTube. Say it louder. Hello YouTube. <laughs> Hello YouTube! Welcome to Zhang's Oriental Food Workshop. What do we do here, Mum? Cooking. Yeah, what, what type? Uh, Chinese takeaway. Yes. Do we have lots of experience? Yeah. But how? Uh, work in there before and doing it since I was young and long, long, still doing it. Yeah, long story short is we own takeaways. My granddad's yes. owned them since 1956, so we know what we're talking about. Anyway, so today we are doing what we call a really classic English. 80s, yeah. isn't it? I was late 70s. I, late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, yeah. Dish, which is chicken and roast pork Chinese style. If you ask your mum and dad, they probably know. If you are a younger one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they probably would know. It's, um, it's not on menus around here very often anymore, but it is up north and the London area, it's still quite on a few menus there. Now this actually has two forms, we're going to be doing the barbecue sauce form um, and there is another form where they just use like a gravy over the top because it's better. Yeah, the barbecue pot you cooked the other day. Yeah, side note, my dad who is the most English man on the planet still orders this whenever we go to a takeaway or a restaurant with this on the menu. Yeah. He's actually so English, he still uses the word cheerio. Like, <laughs> cheerio. Anyway, um, we will get on with this now. So this is everything you're going to need for this Chinese-style roast pork and chicken. This is the 80% meat that I've heard you can actually get in Morrison's now. So if you look in Morrison's, apparently you can get the 80%. I don't know if it's raw or cooked, but you can get it. So go check that out. The Chinese roast pork we showed you how to make in the last video. The bean sprouts, and you need a good two handfuls of this because it will shrink. A pinch of black pepper, quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of MSG, light soy sauce, a few drops of dark soy sauce. You might, oh sorry, you will need um, your potato starch. If you can't get potato starch, which we do sell on our website, www.jangsworkshop.com. Um, you can use corn flour, that does the trick. It just cooks out a bit quicker and it's not, not silky. Then you need 300 milliliters of the stock, which is actually barbecue sauce. It's, that's how they make the barbecue sauce. They cook the Chinese roast pork, they use expensive spices in that, and they recover all their money by selling barbecue sauce. And that literally means that making the Chinese roast pork or the tassu hasn't cost them a thing because they've literally selling the waste product as something but it's beautiful so it's not really waste product it's just deliciousness and you're going to need a lot of oil because we're going to be deep frying these two meats here and pan frying these so around a small saucepan worth of oil and a dessert spoon to fry off the bean sprouts right so first of all you've actually got to warm up your barbecue sauce and then all you do to make this sauce is pour barbecue sauce and turn on the heat. Now, when you make this, you'll see there's a layer of fat. Keep that on there. You don't want to let that go. So you just bring this up to it's boiling, let it boil for two or three minutes just to cook it, and then thicken it. But you don't thicken that right now. You thicken that later down the line. So you warm it up now, keep it warm on a pan at the back, because this is the last thing that goes on and this needs to be hot, because everything else is done in stages. Okay, so the barbecue sauce that we've made this time is a sweet version and it's a red. Um, if your takeaway isn't red like this, but it's still sweet, they probably still use the tassel. If it's more sort of meaty, they've used the rib sauce. Um, some takeaways will just literally alternate between one or the other, whichever was made that week, basically, weren't they? Yes. Um, if we make it, we always use the roast ribs, at, honestly, because it makes a much richer flavour with the bones. Yeah. But a lot of takeaways actually use this or a mixture of both. Um, so yeah. yeah. After about three minutes, it started boiling. This is 
about the time when you let it sit for another two or three minutes just to make sure it's cooked all the way through. You want the sauce hot, but don't thicken it yet. We'll thicken it last. You're just making sure this is warm so it's quick later on. So it's been about two minutes. We're gonna set this to the side. Don't forget about that because that's really important. Um, now you do your bean sprouts. So you get the heat, you want oil in, and then heat up the pan. Normally you'd add the oil to a hot pan, but today, for the sake of time, we've just put the oil in first. Make sure it's hot though when your bean sprouts go in, as always. You've actually put this on the heat at the same time. There's probably around 300, 350 millilitres of vegetable oil in this pan because you want the meat to be warm and you want to keep the bean sprouts warm at the same time. So it's a bit trickier doing this because there's a couple things going on all at once. At the same time, this will be switched on just before these are finished. So it's a bit of a juggling act. You don't have to do it like this, but this is the best way to get it all hot at the same time. You can, in fact, just put your oven on and then put the parts into the oven and then leave it warm until you need it. Hello. Happy cooking. I mean... <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to ask mum, you can put it in the oven, can you? Yeah. Yeah. That's what the oven's for. Yeah, that is what the oven's for. Keeping, well, for cooking things, mum. Yeah. Okay, so the pan is hot enough. This is when the bean sprouts go in. You need quite a few. And at the same time, you put everything else in. So in goes the pepper. MSG and the salt. This doesn't take too long, you're just trying to toast them really. You don't want to overcook them otherwise they'll go soggy. Then goes your dessert, spoon of light soy and a very small drop of dark soy. I forgot to mention uh, Xiaoxing rice wine. This particular brand is very good. You just need a tiny drop of this. Yeah. And then you'll actually need a separate bowl because you need to put the bean sprouts into this bowl so that they can sweat because you need to get rid of all of that juice. What will happen is a lot of that juice comes off there and then that's actually drained away in, a, in most takeaways believe it or not we would actually thicken that up and use less seasoning in that um, but most takeaways they drain it off okay so we're now about to start cooking the meat you don't need many you need about five slices six slices of each and that goes into the hot oil it also will take about two or three minutes all right you can see now that juice in the bean sprouts they would actually drain away so that's what we're going to do today now before someone goes oh why are you draining it away it was all really good stuff that's just how the takeaways do it we know how they do it that's what they do so yes yeah, so if you want to keep that sauce in there by all means do thicken it and but um, this is genuinely how they do it because if they did put this back into a takeaway box and you took that home without draining that out you're basically going to have soup okay so then place the bean sprouts into a bowl a warm bowl you want to try and leave as much liquid in there as possible. Okay, so the oil has been on the heat now for about five, six minutes. It takes quite a while to heat up a large amount of oil. So now we think it's roughly hot enough. We're going to turn the oil down a little bit, not too much, and add the pieces of chicken and pork in at the same time. So one, two, three, four, five. And now for the pork. One, two, three, four, five. We've misjudged how, how much um, pan space we need because we never cook it on this small scale. But um, yeah, be careful. You, you need to get yourselves a good sized pan when you're doing this. And this is basically how most takeaway, well, all takeaways, unless it's got a restaurant attached, will probably make Chinese roast pork. They'll deep fry it. It won't be roasted. It's boiled and then deep fried. The restaurant will boil it, then roast it. But traditional Chinese roast pork, actual char sao, 
All char uh, tassau is tassau. If it's traditional, it's barbecued, boiled, then barbecued. It's looking quite nice now. In a couple minutes, well, I'd say one more minute. Okay, so it's been about three, three and a half minutes. The pork's now, and the chicken's now ready to come out. I think I might leave that in for a little bit longer because I like the pork a little bit darker. So, yeah, I'd say about four minutes then. Yeah. Okay, it's all ready to come out now. Turn off the heat. Turn off the heat, yeah. Turn off the heat and just let it drain into a bowl. Okay, now, so we're going to warm up the barbecue sauce quick sharp because we don't want it all to go cold. Well, we put that onto heat. I will then come over here, portion up this onto the bean sprouts. So just like that. That looks cool. yummy. That's great, doesn't it? Yes. Okay, so like I said before, because this, this is hot and it was only heated up about five minutes ago, you just, it takes very little time for it to get back to temperature. And then when it is, all you need to do is thicken it and then you pour it on top of this, as in this. It looks absolutely amazing. Yes. as we pour it on top of this. And that is it. So what we're going to do is get some boiled rice and try this with this. Right, okay, so... Mum's really trying to get you to see that. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, let's uh, try it. A bit of tassel. Oh, mm. It's lovely. Mm, it Yummy. So, if you've ever wondered how to make barbecue sauce, that's how they do it. If you ever wondered how to make this classic 70s Chinese dish, this is how you do it. I hope you enjoyed it. Everyone's enjoying eating it. Our next video is going to be, we're gonna, well, we've got some prep videos we're gonna go up soon. Um, how to make the blended garlic, how to prep the Lucky Boat noodles. The video that we're actually gonna shoot now, I'm not sure how long it's gonna be till that's up, but it's gonna be a house special fried rice. Now, this is how special fried rice in our local area, so Somerset. Um, it's, I've seen it in variations. It's completely different if I go up north somewhere or down or to London. But we're going to do the one that we know first, and then we'll do variations afterwards. Yeah? Mm. You, did you hear anything? Yeah. What did I say? Um. No, you didn't hear a thing. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, if you like what you see, make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for your time. And if you'd like to support the channel and help us go full time so we can get more videos more of the time, um, by all means, become a patron and you get your name in the credits at the end. So, yeah, thank you very happy, much. Happy cooking. Happy, happy eating. Happy cooking. Happy eating. <laughs>